a special education teacher here in Cheshire has resigned over comments that she made in a video that went viral. I'm Kaylee Collins with the latest. A calm conclusion to a scary situation, a suspect standoff. I'm Matt Carrot reporting in East Hartford. Hear from residents, see the surveillance video and learn what led up to that encounter. After months of back and forth between attorneys about the contempt charge against Michelle Traconis, no resolution. So now the case is going to trial. I'm Julia LeBlanc and we'll give you the details coming up. All local, all morning. This is Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Good morning. Happy Thursday. Thanks for starting yours off with us here at Fox 61 and Fox 61 Plus America area. And I'm Tim Lammers. It is a cold start to the day out there. You're going to want to grab your jacket before you head out the door. That being said, at least as we get over to Rachel Piscatelli here, uh, there was no wind when I was walking mm -hmm, outside, true. and that really made all the difference. Yeah. It was not bad. Absolutely. So yeah. With the yeah. lighter wind that's expected today, it is going to make all the difference in terms of what it feels like outside. However, it is colder, and it is colder in some spots than this time yesterday. So here's what it looks like like over in Hartford right now. We have those mainly clear skies out there this morning. Temperatures have fallen off to below freezing in spots. We do have some scattered upper 20s and even some lower 20s out there now with low humidity too, which means just incredibly dry. Winds right now out of the north around 6 miles per hour. It's 23 in Winstead, 22 in Thomaston this morning. It's 26 in Meriden, 25 in Middletown. The lower 30s from New Haven into Bramford now. And we're dressing for about 23 degrees in Willimantic, so in northeastern Connecticut it is cooler. Plan for sun shine today. Towards the afternoon, there may, may be a few more clouds that start to build in. There is an approaching front that comes close to our area, but unfortunately, we just don't get the rain from it, but we will get some clouds with temperatures today that will be in the upper 50s to right around, or rather upper 40s to right around 50 degrees. So 49 in Milford, 51 degrees in Hartford and southeastern Connecticut, we're in the upper 50s as well. Today will be a cool day, but as we approach the end of our work week and into this upcoming weekend, we do have mild conditions start to that start to build in. So for our Friday, it's around 60 degrees, 63 for Saturday. More details on your weekend forecast coming up in just a bit. 602, let's get a check on the roads. Good morning, Symphony. Hey, good morning to you and good morning to you, Sunshine. If you're just waking up and joining us this morning, let's get you up to speed with what's happening outside on the roads this morning. Some construction projects are wrapping up as we begin the six o'clock hour. Here's a live look over at 84 going through the Hartford Tunnel this morning. Traffic volume not too bad at this point of the morning. And let's wrap with a quick look at our Hartford for drive times. No delays to report yet. 91 heading down to 84 looking good and your commute along the eastbound side of 84 heading toward the Hartford Tunnel this morning should take you about five minutes coming from New Britain Ave. We'll have your next update in just about uh, 15 minutes or so. Tim, Erica. All right, Stephanie, good stuff. Thank you. Well, a special education teacher in Cheshire has resigned after a video she meant to keep private went viral on social media. Yeah, that video appears to show her making threats and politically charged remarks. Fox 61's Kaylee Collins is live now outside of Chapman Elementary School where that teacher worked. She's got the latest. Kaylee, good morning. Tim, Erica, good morning to you both. That teacher, Annie Dunlevy, offered her resignation effective immediately just last night. Her resignation comes after a video that she shared on Snapchat, meant to be a private video sent in a group chat, was recorded by somebody else and then uploaded to social media. That video quickly went viral, gaining even national attention on social media platforms. You might have even seen the video yourself, but at this time, Fox 61 has not been able to independently authenticate it or or see where it originated from. Now, the teacher was placed on leave earlier this week while the school district began an investigation. Concerned parents from Cheshire and beyond still called for that teacher to be removed from her position and criticized the district's original response to the video. My grandson will be coming here next year. He would be in that teacher's district. I will not hand him off if she was there. I can't unsee that video. I don't want to judge her. Um, they have a responsibility in this town to notify us of things like this, but I would not hand any relative off to her. 
Now, in a statement, Cheshire Superintendent Dr. Jeff Solon wrote in part, quote, the comments on that video did not reflect the position of our school system. They were hurtful, deeply concerning, and ultimately undermined the faith that our community has placed in us. As a leader of this school system, I feel terrible for the angst that this has caused our community, and I look forward to returning our focus on the great work that our educators perform every day. Again, that video did appear to see the teacher using obscenities and make politically charged remarks towards those who voted for Donald Trump. At this time, we're still working to confirm whether or not the Cheshire Police Department is still investigating this incident and whether or not Dunleavy will be facing any charges. Reporting live in Cheshire this morning, Kaylee Collins, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. All right, Kaylee, thank you for that report. We appreciate it. 605 now, some tense hours in one East Hartford neighborhood as police tried to convince a shooting suspect to come out of a home that they had surrounded. Now, Fox 61's Matt Karen talked to neighbors yesterday about the ordeal, and he filed this report late last night. This all started Tuesday night. A man claimed his car was shot at in Bloomfield. Police quickly identified a suspect and then located that suspect at about 1030 this morning in Bloomfield, but the man quickly fled to East Hartford. He's been identified as 24 year old Antoine Daniels of Middletown. So I stepped out and I swear to find myself with. People living in the Adams Street neighborhood of East Hartford stepped outside Wednesday morning to find law enforcement on their doorstep. I was just trying to bring my coworker to work and we were like, you know, somebody's on the loose. We just need to be careful or extra precautions. Police from East Hartford, West Hartford, Bloomfield and Vernon converged on this blue house around the corner where a suspect wanted in connection to a domestic dispute was believed to be hiding. I missed everything <laughs> because I was sleeping. Zbigniew Kobus lives right next door. When he woke up and peeked outside, police promptly escorted him to the safety of a cruiser. I just asked what happened. And the blue house that somebody get in and the people who moved in, they actually call for this help from police. Fox 61 cameras captured the entire standoff as police set up a perimeter. They brought in canine dogs and armed themselves with long guns and tactical gear. Calling out to the suspect, 24-year-old Antoine Daniels of Middletown with a loudspeaker. Fox 61 obtained surveillance video that shows Daniels first speaking to the homeowner in his driveway before entering the home where he stayed barricaded for more than an hour. Just do the right thing. It's not worth it. If you're in there, get out. <laughs> get out, man. Give yourself up. And ultimately, that's exactly what happened. Daniels came out through a side door with his hands up. Police approached with caution and made the arrest without incident. A calm conclusion to a scary situation. At this point, the suspect that we were looking for, we have in custody. And right now, we're just clearing uh, two houses right over here just to be safe. Daniels is facing charges of reckless driving and interfering with police, but that is only from Bloomfield. He will likely face several more charges from other police departments related to the pursuit and standoff situation. Reporting in East Hartford, Matt Karen, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Matt, thank you. Uh, Michelle Traconis was back in a courtroom yesterday, eight months after a jury found her guilty of conspiracy to commit murder. Now, this time it was for a hearing on a charge that was added during her trial. Fox 61's Julia LeBlanc was in the courtroom and has more. After months of court dates and closed door conversations between the attorneys, they haven't been able to reach a resolution on this contempt charge. So right now, Michelle Traconis is once again going to trial. This all comes after Traconis was sentenced to 14 and a half years in prison for playing a role in the death of Jennifer Farber Dulos. During that trial, prosecutors say Traconis intentionally displayed a sealed court document for the public to see. That document was related to the contentious divorce between Jennifer and her estranged husband, Fotis Dulos, who was also Traconis's boyfriend. The state has said that document was blown up in large font, but Frost argues it's not easily legible from a distance and though the trial was being live streamed by a TV news videographer, he says his client's laptop wasn't supposed to be shown on camera. And because they happened to do something they weren't supposed to do 
and somebody who is aligned with the victim, the victim's family, was upset about it, it then got elevated to a contempt allegation. But the state says Draconis both wrongfully had her hands on that document and wanted people to see it on her computer. Each time it was reiterated by Judge Randolph on the record during trial that this report was to be remained sealed because it was discussed quite a bit during that lengthy trial. Now the trial date is set for March 11th, but the attorneys will meet again in January where Frost hopes jury selection will be waived so that this case can go to a bench trial. We are in Stamford, Julia LeBlanc, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. All right, Julia, thank you. Well, Republicans will keep control of the U.S. House of Representatives on January 3rd as they got the 218th seat that they needed when Arizona Congressman Juan Siscomani won his re-election bid. Now, as for how big the Republicans' majority will be, that remains to be seen as there are nine races that are still undecided. And when President-elect Trump is sworn into office on January 20th, his party will be in control of Congress. And the peaceful transition of power is already underway. President Biden invited President-elect Trump to the White House. They met in the Oval Office yesterday. Biden promised to make the transition as smooth as possible. Do everything we can to make sure you're accommodated, what you need. And we're going to get a chance to talk about some of that today. So Good. Welcome. Welcome Thank you. Back. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, politics is tough, and it's, uh, in many cases, not a very nice world, but it is a nice world today, and I appreciate it very much. Trump will be sworn in on January 20th.